here in Texas. So I'm at a, at a, at a public institution, roughly 12,000 students. And in the College of Business, we have roughly 2,200, uh, about 1,100 undergrad, 1,100 uh, grad. Uh, and we're also an AACSB accredited school. So, of course, all of these, you know, place limitations on, on the process and also on the profile of student of uh, faculty, sorry, that we're looking for. So the, the process, of course, uh, first of all, if we have a line available in the college, uh, it is up to me to decide on, you know, uh, which department or which discipline we should hire in, right? So, of course, uh, each one of the department heads, they'll, they'll make their pitch. They'll say, you know what, I really need a faculty member in this area or that area. We really need the line. If we don't have a line available, it's my obligation to pitch it to the provost, and uh, hopefully they would they would uh, give me the line. Um, and if not, I just have to make do with what I have. Okay. From there, uh, we have uh, obviously a committee that's formed. So if we have a line that's opened, and I say, you know what, we need this for a new supply chain degree, and the supply chain degree will be housed in the management department. So that way, the department head uh, of management will take uh, on the, the, the management role of the process, will form a committee. Three members have to be from within the department. One member has to be external. Uh, all of this is with oversight of HR, right? So there has to be a checklist, what were the requirements, what not, diversity issues, and so on and so forth. So they keep an eye on this entire process. Uh, then a recommendation is made to me on on who I be, uh, they believe that I should uh, consider. Normally, they give me about three names. Of course, in this process, they uh, do the background checks, they do the phone interviews, then they do the invitations, normally of about three candidates to campus. Uh, then they'll make the recommendations to me. I'll make the recommendation to the provost, and normally, unless the provost really believes that I've, you know, I'm off in left field, uh, normally, uh, you'll follow my recommendation, and that's the way we manage the hiring process. So I don't know if that was comprehensive enough or if I hit on the points that, that you wanted. Thank you. It was quite comprehensive, and you certainly addressed the points. Uh, and, of course, this is a, a U.S. viewpoint from a state institution, as Dean Hayek mentioned. Um, it may be that a dean from a, the United States in a private institution would have a different view. It's possible. But we have several countries represented, so we would like to hear from all of you. And uh, perhaps we'll call on um, Ina Jindrishkovska in the Czech Republic. Is Ina with us? Uh, Jan, Ina is not with us. Uh, he, she left uh, a little while from the other session. And sorry for being uh, late. We, we were late in, uh, in the previous session. So, uh, sorry. You, you can start with uh, Malgorzata Lutuzinska from Poland, Jan. Okay. Malgorzata. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a really great pleasure to be with you today at uh, the IKB conference. Thank you very much, Professor Talasinos, for the invitation and for the, um, giving me possibility to be uh, here uh, with you. Uh, I have prepared a short presentation to uh, visualize my words. Uh, so please give me a while to share my do desktop with you. Uh, can you see my mm, presentation? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, um, uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm uh, Małgorzata Łatuszyńska. Since September 2020, I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Economics, Finance and Management at University of Szczecin. Uh, before that, uh, for eight years, I was the deputy dean for uh, students' affairs. Uh, I would like to remind you that uh, a year ago, my faculty was a co-organizer of the previous edition of the IKB conference. Uh, 
uh, we were uh, very proud to host uh, virtually participants of the conference. Uh, we used uh, MS Teams as well, so I know how uh, difficult it is to organize an online conference. I think this year's organizers have handled it very well. Congratulations. Uh, the topic of our uh, panel is hiring, promotion, tenure, uh, tenure non-renewals uh, and other issues. Uh, but uh, due to the fact that the uh, faculties at the University of Szczecin do not run any policy of hiring, promotion, tenure and uh, uh, non-renewals, I will focus uh, on other issues. I hope you will allow me to, bro to, to break a little bit the order of this uh, 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 panel. Uh, so I will um, speak about all uh, uh, some uh, other uh, issues, not um, only about uh, hiring. Uh, I, I hope you will allow me to do that. Uh, yes. Before uh, I say a few, uh, before I say a few words about the university and the Faculty of Economics, Finance and Management, I would like to introduce you to the geographical location of the region and the city of Szczecin, in Poland, in which we operate. Uh, Szczecin is uh, uh, the one of the biggest cities in Poland, the capital of West Pomeranian region which is the fifth largest voivodeship uh, of Poland in terms of uh, area. As you can see, the city is located relatively close to five capitals of European countries, only enough the furthest from Warsaw. Uh, due to the proximity of Berlin, we are perfectly connected with the rest of Europe and the world, which is uh, conducive to the development of, inter of international uh, cooperation. Uh, University of Szczecin is the largest university in the West Pomeranian region. It is a public university and one of the most important employers in our region, employing of total uh, of 1,785 employees, including uh, above 1,000 research and teaching uh, staff. Uh, we hold full rights of an uh, autonomous university. Uh, there are currently 18 research institutes and seven uh, faculties at the university. And uh, among them, the Faculty of Economics, Finance and uh, man Management. Uh, my uh, faculty is the biggest uh, of uh, uh, is the biggest of seven uh, faculties at the University of Szczecin. Educates at the moment about 4,000 students in full-time and part-time uh, studies. And the tenth uh, of the faculty is the research and teaching staff, uh, currently employed in three research institute, institutes uh, cooperating with the faculty. Uh, in total, it is uh, 310 research and teaching staff, including uh, 25 full professors, 76 associate professors, 168 lecturer uh, and assistant professors, and 41 teaching assistants. Uh, our faculty offers uh, 15 bachelor's degree programs and 14 master's degree programs. Three programs are entirely in English language, one bachelor and two masters. In addition, the faculty offers a dozen postgraduate post -graduate study programs, including Master of Business Administration. Uh, faculty students can deepen their research interest by joining one of over 20 dynamically operating student research groups. And we are located uh, in two campuses, Cukrova and Miskiewicza. Our faculty is located in two uh, campuses. Uh, this is uh, the complete list of study programs offered at the faculty. English courses are in green. There are economics and IT applications for bachelor degree and two for master's degree, public management and international economics. We are currently working on the program of a new English language course, business management, which will be offered to both bachelor and uh, master uh, degrees. Uh, every year, uh, the faculty boasts the largest number of foreign students at the University of Szczecin. Now we have about uh, 300 foreigners, including students coming to us under uh, the Erasmus International Student Exchange Program. 
in uh, which we have been participating since uh, 1998. Uh, uh, that's an average of around 80 Erasmus students per semester. Uh, for the current semester, despite the pandemic, 76 students from various uh, countries uh, came uh, to us. At present, uh, also, we have uh, 219 foreign students uh, which uh, um, follow the full cycle of education. Uh, and they uh, come from different continents, mainly Europe, but from Asia and Africa uh, also. And um, last year, we had also South American students. Uh, as a part of the mobility uh, programs, academic teachers from other countries uh, also come to us for teaching purposes. However, we cannot uh, boast of too large numbers. It is several people during the academic year. Hope that will uh, change uh, soon. We are open uh, to any cooperation related to the education of students, uh, both under the Erasmus program and uh, bilateral agreements. Uh, we are uh, currently conducting uh, talks on launching joint master studies with several foreign uh, universities. And I emphasize again that the faculties uh, at the University of Chechen only deal with education. So I am not talking about scientific uh, cooperation. This is the domain of uh, institutes. Uh, this is due to re uh, reorganization of the university in connection with the reform of higher education system in Poland, which was implemented two years ago. On the wave of this reform, University of Szczecin underwent a deeper reorganization than most other universities in Poland. The most important change was the separation of science from didactics, uh, which meant uh, that the faculties became units responsible only for education, while the institutes operating alongside faculties became scientific units. Uh, the criterion for establishing the institutes was to assign them to a specific uh, scientific discipline. In the case of institute cooperating with the Faculty of Economics, uh, Finance uh, uh, and Management, these are three disciplines in the field of social sciences. These are Finance and Management, Social Economy, Geography and Special Economy, uh, and uh, Management and Quality Sciences. As you see, it is reflected also in the names of uh, institutes uh, cooperating with uh, the uh, faculty. It should be mentioned here that the current classification of disciplines in Poland also results from uh, this uh, reform. Uh, research and teaching staff are employed in the institutes and the directors of the institutes carry out a narrow employment policy within the possibilities offered by uh, legal regulations. The employing authority is director uh, of the university acting within uh, centralized rules. Uh, the faculties have only administrative staff providing services to students and fields of study Using the human resources, in, it means academic teachers of the institutes, uh, cooperating with the faculty. It is uh, worth mentioning that before the reorganization, the university had only uh, nine faculties dealing with both uh, science and education. And since uh, uh, 2019, we have seven faculties and 18 institutes related to scientific disciplines. It means a total of 25 separate units. Unfortunately, it should be said that uh, such a separation between science and didactics causes many organizational problems that we have been struggling with two, uh, for two years and still, and still uh, uh, are. And uh, summing up, the principles of hiring, promotion, tenure, non-renewals at the university as a public higher education unit results from the relevant act and regulations of the Polish Minister of Education and Science. Uh, the rector is the body that employs all employees in administrative, scientific, educational and technical. The dean of the faculty is selected through a competition 
Candidates for the deal must be given an opinion of the scientific councils of institutes cooperating with the faculty, but the uh, director has the last word in any, in any case. At the faculty, only administrative staff work providing services to students and educational programs using the human uh, resources of the institutes cooperating with the faculty. Uh, the dean holds his position for four years. This is the term for all functional positions at the university, like rectors, vice rectors, institute directors, and so on. Uh, the faculty may report the need to hire an administrative employee. However, decisions are made at the rector's level. Uh, research and teaching staff are employed in the institutes and the directors of the institutes uh, pursue a narrow employment policy within the scope of the possibilities offered by legal regulations, but the last word also uh, belongs to the rector. Uh, at the end of my short speech, I would like to say that this year is very special uh, for um, the Faculty of Economics, Finance and, and Management because uh, um, we are uh, celebrating the 75th anniversary of higher economic education in Western Pomerania. Uh, the faculty derives from the first Polish higher education unit which began educating students in Western Pomerania after the Second World uh, War. Uh, 75 years is, is not too much compared to the centuries-old tradition of other academic communities. Uh, but in uh, our region, West Pomeranian region, it is a complete history of Polish economic uh, science. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> As you see, uh, I can't see a lot about uh, uh, topics uh, of this uh, panel, uh, like uh, hiring, uh, renewals, uh, and, and um, so on. Uh, but uh, I, I hope uh, that it was a very good occasion to uh, show uh, some information about my university and to encourage you to visit our faculty and our university. Thank you uh, very much. You're muted. Thank you, Dean Latushinska. Um, May I ask kindly the presenters to limit their discussion to no more than five minutes so that we give chance to everyone to present and then we can have additional uh, contributions if we have time at the end. Um, Dean uh, Ina Romanova, would you like to share something about your institution and your country? Yes, with a pleasure. Um, I have prepared a presentation as well, but I will try to be as short as possible, just giving you the key ideas so that you know what the University of Latvia actually is. Um, now, let me share in a different way. Just a second. So, I hope that you can see my screen. First of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It's my real pleasure to represent today the University of Latvia and the Faculty of Business Management and Economics. I am Vice Dean of the Faculty and my responsibility is Science. But besides that, I am Professor in Finance. Um, just for you to have an idea, the University of Latvia is the biggest comprehensive university and the only classical university in Latvia, meaning that we have 13 different uh, faculties covering natural, natural sciences, humanities and art, uh, medicine and health science, as well as social sciences. Um, the university itself is uh, relatively large, uh, having 17 scientific institutes and seven regional branches. In terms of students, we have more than 15,000 students. Uh, the number of foreign students has decreased due to the pandemics, but we hope that in the future it will increase again. We have in total 154 study programs and we really 
uh, put an effort to have international cooperation. And as a result, we have agreement with more than 200 different institutions of higher education. We do have a lot of employees and we hire uh, employees not only with a doctoral degree, but also with master degree. And we attract a lot of industry professionals to hold some lectures within the professional bachelor and master study programs. Uh, the University of Latvia is ranked number 600-800 by the Times Higher Education World University ranking. Besides, uh, it is ranked uh, 137th in the Emerging Economies University ranking for 2022. Um, QS World uh, University ranking uh, for the Emerging and Europe and Central Asia universities ranks uh, us as number 41. Speaking about the Faculty of Business Management and Economics, we have more than 2,000 students uh, providing uh, studies uh, on bachelor, master and doctoral level. We have in general 16 study programs and six of these programs are in English. Uh, all our study programs are accredited till 2027. We had our accreditation very recently. Uh, besides that, we are uh, members of the AACSB, um, actually focusing on getting this accreditation as well in the future. We have a lot of incoming students and uh, we encourage student mobility not only within Erasmus uh, programs, but also we have international bilateral agreements, Erasmus Plus worldwide mobility. We have Erasmus agreements with uh, universities in 26 countries. Um, as I've mentioned before, we have professional programs as well, and we uh, focus also on uh, practical issues. That's why we encourage industry professionals to teach at our university. Besides, we have student business incubator, which I would say facilitates uh, initiation of the business and, you know, kind of approbation of the business idea at the early stage by the students. We have four departments at the faculty and uh, that's why we ensure research in all areas, finance and accounting, management sciences, economics, as well as global economics. We have two journals which are submitted uh, to the inclusion in the Scopus and Web of Science. We are still waiting for the decision. And we also encourage student uh, involvement in science at early stage. Uh, that's why we organize student conferences and some international conferences. And using the opportunity, I would invite you to join us uh, in May 2022 for the next conference we are going to organize. I hope really that it will be possible to do face-to-face. Uh, -face. Speaking about the hiring, the hiring process initiate is initiated by the department. So if there is a need for a specific uh, lecture, for a specific professor, the department uh, starts the process. Uh, the hiring, um, well, let's say, um, the necessity of the staff should be approved by the faculty council. If it is approved, uh, it goes to the University of Latvia Senate and only in case the Senate approves the new position, the application process starts. Um, the application process takes around one month to apply with the documents and afterwards around two months uh, for the evaluation by the professor's council. Uh, basically, there are three um, groups of criteria for the hiring of faculty staff members. Here, I would like to really stress we are talking about faculty staff members, permanent members. In this case, what we really uh, put the focus on is scientific qualification in terms of um, quality of publications, involvement in different scientific or uh, practical projects um, and stuff like that. Uh, besides, we uh, assess the pedagogic qualification, meaning whether the person has the necessary uh, skills and experience to ensure, uh, the, ensure teaching of particular classes. Uh, besides, what is also important uh, is organizational work. Uh, and uh, it means a uh, different kind of involvement in the faculty life, like, for example, involvement in uh, organization of international conferences, um, membership on editorial boards and stuff like that.
I have to say that in Latvia currently we don't have any tenure. So it means that the assessment period is always six years. Uh, basically, people are elected where the staff members are elected for six years and afterwards a renewal is necessary. So um, scientific and pedagogical and of course organizational uh, qualification will be reassessed every six years. But as I've mentioned before, we also uh, strive to attract industry professionals for some particular particular um, particular um, study courses and particular professional programs. So it means that they are not permanent staff members. Maybe some of them later they become per permanent staff members. But we really put value on the mixture of uh, the theory and the practice. That's why we really have a lot of industry professionals teaching at the University of Latvia. And uh, regarding uh, hiring of scientific staff, I have to say that the application process or the hiring process is uh, relatively similar. Um, the necessity is uh, the process is initiated by the proje project, the head of the project normally. Then um, the necessity for this new staff member is uh, approved by the faculty of council, faculty council, then the University of Latvia Senate, and then the application process starts. But in this case, we have um, not the professors council, but we have a scientific council which assesses um, the um, experience and the qualification of the possible staff members and of course in this case the basic focus is put on the scientific work. Also in this case assessment period is six years. So I hope I have uh, managed to uh, explain the things uh, in, in, within the five minutes. Thank you for your attention. This is Riga. You are welcome uh, winter, spring or fall. Thank you. Thank you Dean Romanova. Next, we'll have uh, uh, Dean uh, Georgiana, uh, Graciela Georgiana Noja from, the, uh, from Romania uh, presenting to us. Uh, I would like Professor to say- Professor Simidiras, uh, welcome. How are you, Antonis? Thank you yes, very thank well. You. Thank you, and thank okay, you for good, inviting good, me. Good, thank good. you. Uh, Zan, Professor, Professor Simidiras is also Dean. Uh, his name is in, in the list. Okay, uh, would you like to present at this time? We have not gotten uh, Dean you asked Graziella. Uh, with us. Yes, you I'm you here. asked for Graziella. And then, uh, is she here? Yes, yeah, she's here. I'm yeah, here. Graziella. I don't have a problem okay. if uh, uh, the other colleagues would like yeah. to interfere. Yeah. It's okay. okay. You can it's go okay. ahead, Thank but you. I will kindly okay. again ask everyone to. Yes, Speak keep it no short. More than five minutes because other people will not be able to say anything. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, first of all, again, many, many thanks for uh, uh, the invitation to join this panel discussions and, of course, for the opportunity to also present my university, which is the West University of Timisoara from Romania. And I'm the vice dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business Administration, also the largest faculty within the university. Just a brief mentions, again, related to the university and the faculty itself. We have a very large history of more than seven decades. Uh, the West University of Timisoara is basically a large academic community, a family of 16,000 members and the largest one in the western part of Romania. Uh, it is actually a regional leader in the field of higher education and research. We have numerous connections uh, in the more and more globalized academic world and hold a unique achievement in the west part of the country. Very well ranked in world university ranking as, as well as in other international rankings. We have around 16,000 students, 11 faculties, more than 80 bachelor programs, around 120 master programs, more than 12 PhD programs and several advanced research centers, of course, a, a, a large a part of the academic staff and over 500 international bilateral agreements. We are very focused on international collaboration and this would be a good opportunity to, to exchange some context as well. Uh, in terms of the educational process, because I'm dealing as vice dean with the educational process in particularly, 
actually the 11 faculties within the university practically cover all the main directions of study in the fields of exact sciences, economics, law, social and political sciences, humanities and arts at the same time. So these are the main uh, faculties that cover our faculty of economics and business administration as mentioned previously being the largest one, uh, both in terms of academic staff and in terms of the number of students. So we have been trying to, to keep up with the, with the new times and being highly active in connecting with prestigious higher education institutions around the world. As mentioned previously, we have more than 500 bilateral agreements and we organize hundreds of incoming and outgoing mobilities yearly for our students as well as for academic and administrative staff and as well as with more than 1,000 international students that are both degree seeking and credit seeking and more than 500 Erasmus plus outgoing mobility, uh, university is constantly keeping up with the goal of deepening the internationalization of our university at home and in the world, of course. We do have bachelor programs in foreign languages, particularly within our faculty. We have accounting and management information systems, which is taught in German. We have management the bachelor program in French, finance and banking taught in English. Uh, and then again, we ha also have uh, 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 programs from other colleagues from other uh, faculties in computer science, drama, uh, from the Faculty of Arts and International Relation and European Studies taught in German at the same time. Uh, we also have master programs in foreign language for the Faculty of Economics. We do have uh, an MBA, Management of Business Organization program that is taught in English, which is within the management field and one in international corporate finance which is in, within the finance field. And of course, we do have also uh, one which is Global Economics, Entrepreneurship Management, a global degree uh, which is mainly focused on research particularly and the uh, one in French which is uh, again thought in the management area. Uh, we, we try to focus and to keep up with, with uh, colleagues from the other university and always try to open up to them. So the Erasmus Plus Mobility uh, Project for our students and staff mobility has been successfully implemented within the West University of Timisoara due to more than uh, agreements, uh, of around 500 agreements around the world. I just wanted to, to welcome you within my university and my faculty in particularly, but also in Timisoara. Uh, it is the third city from Romania. It will be the European capital of culture. It was supposed to be in 2021, but postponed for 2023. It is a very impressive area, uh, a multicultural city, which is dominated by the spirit of ethnic and uh, uh, tolerance, modern and cosmopolitan city, whose motto is as well, union and diversity. So we particularly welcome you here. Coming back to the hiring procedure, it is again starting with the department. Uh, they select the needs in terms of teaching and research. And during this period, we really do seek for young people, talented people, focus more on research for particular research uh, assistant positions, but also for uh, a teaching assistant position. And this would be, uh, let's say, our main focus for the next university year. Thank you again very, very much for this opportunity and really looking for further discussions in the, the, the next next uh, minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Graciela Georgiana Noja, for you. uh, presenting your school. Uh, we are learning quite a lot about the different schools and the different countries. It's really impressive. Uh, next, we'll go to the United States. If I may ask uh, Dean Bernadette Tiernan to present. Uh, dean Bernadette is she executive director, the equivalent of a dean for William Patterson University in the fields of uh, continuing and professional education. Thank you for being here, Bernadette. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about something very different from the programs that you've been discussing, because in our uh, School of Continuing and Professional Education, we're working primarily with non-credit programs uh, and with an eye towards are attracting students to the university who will come back and enroll in degree programs. So we work very closely with our colleagues in uh, the Kosakos College of Business uh, who will also be presenting. Uh, we begin working with students as young as middle school uh, and we feel that the middle school and high school populations are very important to gain exposure to the university to present us in a, uh, the best possible light uh, also, to help young people discern their possible choices of a major. So our goal with our youth programs for middle and high school students 
is to present the areas of study that we excel in here at William Patterson University through Saturday uh, academy programs and through intensive summer programs so that they, these young people can reside on the campus, have an opportunity to uh, be exposed to faculty members as well as industry experts and uh, experience what we call a taste of college life. Uh, that we keep in touch with these students so that we will hopefully be welcoming them back as uh, degree-centered students later on. Uh, as the program has grown, we've uh, also gone into the school districts to develop and deliver professional certification programs. Again, with an eye towards what is our university excelling in? Can we get them interested in business or in healthcare or in the sciences at a young age? so that they will consider us as a destination. But in the meantime, if they're not quite ready for college, by working with us, they will have a professional certification that will enable them to secure a much better job while they discern whether they're uh, uh, ready for college or not. We're very close to some locations that have um, uh, high economic challenges, and there are many uh, young people who may not be able to afford college without some help and um, may not be in a family where someone has gone to college that will be talking to them about the future. So we feel it's very important to give that exposure and to let them know there's somebody at the campus that will talk with them about their aspirations uh, and open their eyes to new possibilities. For the adult learners, uh, we um, are working with non-traditional students, people who are usually, when they're coming to our unit, they're looking to move ahead in their career. Uh, so they may or may not have an undergraduate or graduate degree, but they need something in order to get to the next step for their job and for what they would uh, like to, what they aspire to. Uh, so those programs are conducted on the campus, but we also go to companies and deliver the programming on site at the company locations. Uh, another piece of what we are working on that's crucial is to bring adult learners back to the campus to complete their degrees. We're finding uh, the research is indicating that there are many, many individuals who have stopped out of college. Maybe uh, they went about halfway through, but for some reason have not continued and we feel it's very important to reach out to that group to get them back to finish because our, the data indicates that their career potential and their earnings potential will rise exponentially if they have the degree behind them. Um, we also find that if they have stopped out of college, there's probably a set of factors to deal with that have not gone away. They may have a very challenging job, they may have family um, uh, pulling them in different directions. They may have financial challenges. So we need to deal holistically with the adult learner to engage them and to make sure that when they come back this time, they come back and they finish. So we are doing everything possible to work with creative time structuring and uh, creative packaging of courses, but most of all, the support services that address the holistic needs of the adult learner as someone quite different from a, a, a traditional student who has a parent to guide them uh, and, and other sources of support. Um, so uh, we are the beginning from the young to as long as people want to continue learning um, in our uh, school. And we work uh, very closely with our colleagues in the colleges and their disciplines uh, so that we can showcase the excellent work that they're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Executive Director Ternan. As Bernadette said, just a note to people from different countries, because as you see, we have differences, and this is a, a very learning session for me, uh, for sure. Uh, in the United States, as Bernadette said, it's a transition. So her uh, area, the School of Continuing uh, and Professional Studies is a transition towards credit work. Uh, 
But in fact, in the United States, corporate America values, you see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, value certificates, which is given by Bernadette's uh, school, value certificates. And so the people, the clients, so to say, the students who go to the School of Continuing uh, and Professional Education, basically get something that is valued by the companies and is uh, useful to do so. Just a note of clarification, because a, a few of you from around the world may have different systems, of course, as we already have seen. Thank you, John. Thanks, Bernadette. Then we'll go next to Andonis, uh, um, who is the Dean in the United Kingdom. Hi, and uh, thank you very much indeed for having me. Uh, I'm not the, uh, the Dean, uh, or I'm not going to speak with my uh, position as Dean at Swansea University a uh, long time ago. In the last five years, I used to be in Kuwait. Uh, where I, I gathered uh, a completely different kind of experience there. I'd rather yeah, talk, but talk, talk your about... Your name, Adonis, your name, Professor Simidiras, oh, your name, sorry. introduce yourself, please. Sorry, sorry, I thought I thought you had you had the information in front of you. Sorry, uh, my name is uh, Antonis, Antonis Simidiras, uh, born uh, Greek, uh, being Greek all my, uh, all my life. I lived uh, most of the time in the UK. I uh, was the professor of uh, marketing at Swansea University for more than uh, 35 years. When I retired from Swansea University, uh, I'm now the emeritus professor there. But in the last five years, I went to Kuwait, where I was the dean of the business school at the Gulf University for Science and Technology, a private institution in Kuwait of uh, about three and a half thousand students. Uh, we do have, we had a, a College of Business Administration, the largest uh, college in uh, the university, with about 2,200 students, and um, uh, one only master's degree, a, a full-time MBA program. All the other degrees, they, they were undergraduate uh, degrees. With regards to hiring, um, the hiring process over there was um, very because it was very standardized, uh, at the beginning at least. We had a um, system where every uh, candidate could access the system and submit all the information from CV to application form to other supporting information, everything. Everything was going to that um, set to base. And then we had the human resource management who were doing the checkup on all the criteria that we were setting for whatever we wanted to recruit. So applications were being rejected that they were not meeting the standards that we wanted to or the, all the information. They were being rejected and candidates were being informed if they wanted to resubmit the full uh, set of information or if they had no interest. After the information was coming to our base, then we were just meeting as a recruitment panel, in which panel the head of the department and the dean was a must, must be there. Myself as a dean, I was on every, every selection panel. And of course, the heads of the departments were, depending as to if we wanted to recruit someone in management, it was the, the, the head of the management school, accounting, finance, and so on and so forth. We had different uh, heads there. And when we had the interviews, then we were making the decision to either offer the job or not offer the job. And after that, it was going over to the VP Academic Affairs for approval, then to the president for signing, and then that appointment was being confirmed and was being announced to the individual. So with regards to the process, we did not have much of a problem. Where we had the problem was with the attributes. To go back to the second point, now the, the process was fairly standardized and we could manage it easily. With regards to the attributes, we had different degrees and we were looking for different kind of pedigree for each degree. So not every candidate or every academic was good fit for whatever we wanted 
in that. For instance, we had management science, we wanted different pedigree of academics. We had marketing, we had wanted different pedigree of academics for that. We had accountants, we wanted different pedigree for that. So in reality, we were making that how to more or less work out all the attributes or the characteristics of the individuals that we wanted to hire in each department, as opposed to have one set of attributes or characteristics to fit all departments. That was not an easy, an easy uh, exercise. But uh, leadership robustness, as we had that at the university for effective uh, management of business faculty talent, was safeguarded or used to be safeguarded by the dean being present at all times and each head of the department also being there and the head of the, each department was making the choice of what people wanted to be included in the recruitment process and that used to safeguard that we were trying to attract the best talent and the most appropriate talent for each department we wanted to hire. I hope I gave you a brief and um, idea of what was the process and what sort of uh, how we were managing the attributes that we were looking for at the Gulf University for Science and Technology. And thank you for listening. Thank you, Dean Simindiras. Uh, next we'll go and we'll leave some time at the end for questions and answers, of course. We hope to have 10 minutes or so for questions and answers, at least 10 minutes. We'll go uh, to the next person, uh, Dean Spiridakos. Dean Spiridakos is from the University of West Attica, and just mm -hmm. to remind you that the University of West Attica is our co-host institution. Uh, this is a joint effort of uh, the University of West Attica and William Patterson University. Very nice to have you, Dean uh, Spiridakos. Yeah. Good evening, uh, and for my point of view, uh, it's a wonderful uh, meeting because I, I learn a lot concerning the high and promotion of uh, all the other, uh, all the, the universities of the deans participating in this. Uh, I'm Thanas Piridakos, I, uh, I work as a dean of uh, the uh, ad, uh, ad, uh, management, uh, uh, financial and uh, social science uh, school, the faculty of, uh, and uh, I am the dean for the last uh, five years. Uh, our university is a new one, but not really, because uh, actually it uh, it is uh, the merging of uh, two polytechnics, the two central polytechnics of uh, Greece, uh, Technological Education Institute uh, of Athens and Technological Education Institute of uh, Pyros, were merged uh, for this new university in uh, 20, uh, 2018. Uh, so, we are, uh, as a university, we are a new one, uh, but uh, we are the third, uh, as far as uh, the number of students is concerned, uh, the, the third university in Greece, as, as, uh, as, uh, uh, for, for them, from the number of students' uh, point of view. Uh, we have uh, in our uh, school, I have a small presentation, but uh, I'll try to keep uh, uh, the time because uh, uh, actually here in Greece, the hiring system uh, is uh, the hiring for a new professor from new uh, members of our co uh, academic committee uh, are very complicated, are regulated by the ministry. And uh, actually, I would like not five minutes, I, I, I need more than one hour in, in order to explain all the issues. Greek, Greek uh, professor uh, will smile for this because we all face this uh, problem as far as the hiring of uh, new personnel. Uh, as I said, uh, the, uh, the whole process is regulated by the ministry. The new ministry di di distributes the position, the new positions uh, every year to the university. The rector of the council distributes the positions, the new positions, to the departments, not the schools, not the faculties, to the departments. Uh, then a process is take place in order the department to identify the subject, the specific subject of the candidate, of the new position. 
a concerning of, of course, they take place, they take into uh, consideration the needs of every department, uh, the research uh, needs, everything. So the departments specify the, uh, the subject of uh, the title, the subject of uh, the position, and then go, we are going to a bid. We are going to, we are going to an open process where candidate, oh, uh, this is happened for all the university, not for all university for all West, of West Attica, for all the Greek universities. We have uh, also a, a, a very, an excellent uh, software system, a web system, the Appella system, which the candidate handles all uh, the documents and the candidate, candidates uh, uploads their uh, applicant to and all the material in this system. Then a committee consisting of external and internal members of the staff are uh, working and they are selecting, they, they are, they record the candidates following specific rules that are coming from the specific uh, legislation uh, concerning uh, this process. For example, a, a candidate which has one paper more than another, a published paper, will be in better position than the other. And of course, the, 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 uh, of course, as far as I was saying, the relation of uh, the uh, candidates, uh, candidates' um, uh, expertise to the subject of the position is uh, a non-off process. It is related or is not related. We have not the, the capability to say, ah, oh, he is more uh, related to the subject, this candidate, than another. It's, it's a non -off, this is a non-off pro process. After this, after the selection, after the, the rank ordering of the candidates using these specific rules, we have a process that uh, the position, the, the selection have to go to the rector, then to the ministry, and uh, finally to be financed by the uh, Greek government. But I have to say that there are uh, these strict many times goes to the justice because uh, a candidate uh, have an, an, a disagreement concerning the, the, the documents, the documentation of the selection and uh, he or she can go to the justice and the hiring of the person can delay one year, two years it's a very strict process. Uh, I don't want to spend more time concerning this. Uh, it's a, I think that the, the Greek uh, colleagues uh, will agree with me that uh, this is our strict, uh, our uh, strict process. It, it is. Uh, it was very helpful for me to know the, fle flex the flexibility that you have in your systems, uh, the hiring system, as far as the hiring of new personnel is concerned. I have to say that when a, a permanent staff, a staff that wo is working in our university, wants to improve in, an, in a better position from assistant to become an associate, the same process, open process with outside candidates is taking place. Uh, this is our life here in Greece. Thank you. You forgot Thank to you. say that this is a lifetime employment, so uh, oh, it's, yeah. it's good to wait. It's permanent, so, yes, it's permanent, yes. yes if you are selected, I, I have lifetime, so you stay yeah, forever uh, at the university. We, we have three three levels. We have assistant, associate, know, and full. From after the associate uh, the level of associate uh, professor, uh, this, the, uh, this the is a permanent, is permanent. Uh, position. Yeah. The position of birth. Thank you. And thank the you. electorate body consists of 11 members. Yeah. So you have 11 yes. professors. Uh, it depends on. In my department, we have uh, 21 uh, uh, member, uh, members of the academic staff. We have to have 15 members. Oh, okay. Yes. 11 or 15. Yes. Thank you, Dean Spiridakos. And I think we have covered everyone outside of uh, William Patterson University. We have left our own deans for last. So we'll present uh, Dean Anthony Bowring and then Dean uh, uh, Martin Gritz. Okay, thanks, um, John.
Thank you, everyone. Um, I, too, have learned a lot from your comments so far, and I'll try not to duplicate. So William Patterson University is a public state university with a teaching emphasis, currently about 10,000 students overall. Our College of Business has about 1,700 graduate and undergrad. Oh, man. Sorry about that, guys. Um, we're AACSB accredited. We're a Hispanic serving institution, a minority serving institution, and we attract a large number of first generation students. And I say that to give an idea of the type of profile of our student body, which influences the focus areas as far as attracting faculty. So as a public state institution, the process that Dean Hayek described in Texas is very similar for us. Um, in terms of the attributes that we look for, the teaching potential teaching expertise is absolutely critical. For all intents and purposes, we're an open access institutions, meaning that the academic achievement of our incoming classes tends to be quite diverse, and therefore we pay a lot of attention to ensuring that our professors have the competencies and, and, and skills to deliver to that diversity and help all of our students succeed. Um, we have a tenure system. With that tenure system, there's also a post-tenure review process. Um, six years, roughly, to move from initial appointment to consideration for tenure. At that initial consideration, we also consider promotion to the rank of associate professor. Um, so I'll pause there, give Professor Gritch an opportunity to add, but again, thank you all. This has been quite informative. Yes, thank you, Tony, and I agree. Um, I have learned a lot. I actually grew up in Europe, so I am somewhat familiar with the, the system in different European countries, but that was also about 30 years ago, so things have changed considerably <laughs> since then. Um, I think Tony gave us gave you a nice overview of what William Patterson University looks like as a, as a public institution located in New Jersey. Uh, I have a few thoughts to, to add that um, may go beyond just you know, stating what we are, but what some of the implications of that are. So uh, coming from Europe, at least at the time when I attended college in Germany, uh, while we are a public institution, the fees and tuition that students pay are quite considerable. So we do get some state support, but that has been declining pretty steadily in the 20 years that I have been here. And currently the full-time tuition for undergraduate students, that's uh, four or five or six courses a semester. So for the full year, that's a little bit more than $14,000. So it's not as much as some of the private institutions that charge 40, 50 or $60,000 a year, but it is quite considerable and combined with what uh, Tony mentioned about the demographics and the background of our students. For many of our students, that is a real struggle. There is financial aid available but typically some of it is in the form of loans. So students do incur a substantial amount of debt as they go through their studies, which typically is worth it if they graduate in four or five years with a bachelor's degree. But for students who do not graduate, it presents a real obstacle. And this is not just at William Patterson, this is really a fairly broad description of what a lot of the higher education sector in the United States looks like at this point. Um, in terms of um, faculty, we have 40 full-time faculty members in the College of Business. Um, it's 336, I believe, university-wide. And we have 47 part-time faculty. That's um, typically adjuncts who teach one or two courses a semester, and many of them with, uh, have been with us for a number of years. Um, and more recently, of the, the, the 40 full-time faculty members, um, 38 of them are tenured or tenure-track professors, but we also now have positions that are what probably is comparable to a lecturer in many countries that have a heavier emphasis on the teaching aspect. They teach a heavier load and there's no research expectation, and those positions do not lead to 
tenure. And that is something that has also happened across the country. Some states have moved more quickly towards that than others, but it is a general trend and uh, we are starting to see that here now as well, so that even though these individuals are full-time faculty, they're not in the tenure track line. And that was my quick summary and addition to what, what Tony provided us an overview. Thank you, Dean Gritz, and thank you, Dean Bowerin, uh, for your contributions. Uh, it's a good thing that we have some time for questions and answers. Before we start that, I wanted to uh, comment on how uh, beautiful those institutions in the Czech Republic, in Poland, and Latvia looked by the <laughs> presenters. I want to go and teach there for a semester if they will let me. So, uh, thank you for uh, being part of this. And uh, we really appreciated the diversity that you shared with us. Very different uh, situation from the United States. And now we would like to leave it open to questions and answers from our presenters. I had a question from Dean Spiridakos, and uh, even though I'm of Greek origin, I'm unfamiliar with a lot of the nuances of the Greek universities. The way you described it, the selection process sounds as if it is a centralization nightmare. Oh, uh, we, we know to, to handle it. Actually, it's a, a very, a, a, an overloaded process. We have a lot, a lot of work to, to do. Uh, uh, also, we have uh, a committee of externals. And actually, we have more external than internal members in our committees. And uh, we have taken into consideration that uh, education, the higher education in Greece is fully funded, financed by the Greek government. So, uh, so the, the government poses some rules uh, because the, there is there's not this uh, do, do you know, um, market, uh, labor market, uh, people, university, and uh, there is a demand and an offer. Uh, so, uh, under this, uh, uh, under this circum circumstances, there is a strict, very strict law. The committees have to follow the law, have to follow the law, and uh, we have to follow this, uh, uh, this process. Yes. It's it's a uh, it's a heavy process. I wonder, Dean Spiridakos, if there is a lot of political uh, influence in this process. No, and no, no. There is not. No, no, no. The committees uh, we have a, 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 a committee. Uh, the committees are eleven members uh, from different universities. Some of them. Uh, uh, we have an, uh, a previous law that uh, one of them uh, was uh, three of them was uh, three three or one of them I don't remember were from uh, universities or from abroad Greek uh, uh, Greek nationality but they are they were coming from uh, universities from England United States and, and etc and uh, no no the process is uh, is it, it, it ensures the uh, well doing of uh, this uh, this uh, activity, this selection. Actually, if, if I can help, yeah. actually the, system, the system works like this. The Appella evaluation mm. system has a list of professors on the same discipline from all over the world, Greek nationals. So when an application goes to a department, the department decides, vote actually, uh, members from the appella list to be in the electorate body. Uh, no vote, we have a, a lottery. Yeah, we, well, we take, we take the, the, the names, we have all the names and... Uh, yeah, but we, first, we, first you vote take some... to, to agree if those people are related to the discipline. And then, if there are more than 11, we try to uh, take randomly, okay, mm -hmm. 11 members or 15 members, depending on the size of the department. So this electorate body, as you understand, or maybe I'm in uh, John's mind, 
if there is one guy, one colleague, well known, let's say, okay, among uh, other people, he or she is able to manage this electorate body, more or less, or take the majority vote. So <laughs> this is actually the system uh, follow in most universities. I I have 40 years of experience at the University of Piraeus. So every time I was in uh, in in uh, electorate body, uh, they asked me other colleagues, hey, do you agree for this to go with this guy or with this guy? So it is it is not 100% independent, I would say. Okay, so public relations are always there. And I know cases, very good colleagues with uh, exceptional CV, and they were rejected from Greek universities. Because, why? Because they didn't have the connections, okay, or the, the majority vote among the electorate body. So it's not clearly an uh, independent process. And in most of the cases, even if the system says, well, it depends on number of publications or number of presentations or uh, whatever, uh, the electorate body can reject some publications with a, a rationale that this is not related to the mm -hmm. discipline of this of this position. So it is out. And at the end, we make a, re a report signed by all the people, all, all the, 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 the colleagues, and uh, we go to the General Assembly of the department or the faculty and we vote. Okay, and we vote and uh, we express our thoughts why uh, we, we have this position uh, uh, in favor or against this candidate. But most of the times, as uh, Professor Spiridako said, because the, uh, it's not an objective, let's say, process, many candidates, when they are rejected, they go to the court. And they say, well, you didn't follow uh, the procedure in this stage or in this stage or in this stage. And the whole process goes back. Okay. Wow. Re-evaluation. And we start again from scratch and we go through and we decide again. And if you are lucky, nobody's going to the court again. Otherwise, it may take three or I have six years. I have I have a case after six years oh. waiting time. Okay, six years waiting. Wow. Okay. But it's lifetime employment, even though in the first uh, the, the first two levels it is uh, uh, a certain period, three three years, uh, on the level of a lecturer or assistant professor, <clears throat> and then at the level of associate professor it's uh, permanent. But even though, even in those two levels, the chances to get out are limited because you, they, they will find a way if you are, you know, uh, uh, good enough uh, during this uh, three three year period with the department, they find a way to, 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 to stay, even if you are not uh, uh, voted again. So I think it. It's a different system. I'm not. I'm not in favor of this system. I'm against the lifetime employment. And there was a big debate some years ago, if the system is uh, is objective or is subjective. And I think uh, if we change the system, and I think the, the the system in Latvia is good. If you have six years, okay, a tenure of six years, and then you have to reevaluate it again and again and again. I think you will be more productive instead of going lifetime. Lefteri, interestingly enough, this is becoming, this is, this is being introduced in the United States, the system of Latvia. In other words, depending on the state, an individual professor has not got 
full-time employment. And I'm glad that we have Dean Hayek with us because in Texas, and you know better, Mario, about this, in Texas, there is a post-tenure review and people may lose their tenure, right, uh, Dean Hayek? Yes, I mean, it's not an easy thing, right? So, <laughs> yeah, we, we do have a post-tenure review, but... Uh, the, the, the process is so onerous. So say, say that a professor, you know, after, you know, when, uh, when they're doing their post-tenure review six years later, we're doing the review and they don't meet the requirements, right? So you have a certain number of points uh, based on your publications and the quality of the publications based on your teaching and based on your service. Say that you don't need them, uh, meet the, the requirement. At that time, you know, I have to put you on a performance improvement plan, right? So, so okay. So now you have to go through a performance improvement plan for the next two years, right? So after those two years, you still have a year to be able to, you know, uh, b before you can terminate someone. So yes, you you are correct in that we do have a system in place. Uh, but it's still highly bureaucratic and it takes a long, long time. So a person, if you know that you're going to retire, for example, 10 years from now, you can play the system, right? You can say, okay, I need to stop publishing, you know, a couple years from now. And there is nothing that the university can do until. And there are people who play the system. And unfortunately, it hurts us. Why? Because the next time AACSB comes and they tell us, okay, what percent of faculty are qualified to teach and they don't meet the research requirements, it hurts us. So I have to give them fewer classes so they have fewer SCHs, credit hours that they're teaching, so they don't negatively impact the ratios that I need to maintain for CS AACSB accreditation. So yes, you are correct, uh, but it's not a hard it's not a hard stop. You know, uh, you do the evaluation. If you don't meet the criteria, you're out. No, you still have a number of years to be able to recuperate yourself. And during that period, unfortunately, you do harm us. It 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 causes a harm. So it's by no means a perfect system. But yes, we're going in that direction. Thank you, Dean Hayek. Uh, yeah. Dean, uh, Ina Romanova, you have your hand up. Yes, uh, if I may ask just a short question. What do you mean with the lifetime employment? Does it stop with the retirement age or not obligatory? This is a question for everybody. What do you mean by no. that? No, no, no. Uh, 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 after the lifetime seven, uh, is 60s. still retirement. Yeah. Until the age of 67. 67, yes. And uh, now, nowadays, uh, the last uh, three years, if you, are, if you are born after uh, September, then you can go to the 68. Yeah, depends. Yes, if you are, you, yes. you you are complete the 67 by August 31st, then you go out. Even if you if you are born uh, September 1st next year, you stay for one year. But I was unlucky. I was uh, born 29th of uh, August. <laughs> <laughs> I'm At our I'm university, <laughs> we have no uh, age limit, so that's, in my opinion, another another problem. Right. Yes, you don't uh, have age you, limit. Yes, yes. yes. This no, you is, can uh, stay. You can stay forever. This yeah. is the same right thing here. There, there's no mandatory requirement. Um, yeah, the Supreme Court decided a few years ago in the United States that people may not be removed based on their age. So somebody could teach until he or she is 100 years old. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I I I know a case in Chicago. Uh, he was one of my teachers, my professors. He had a strong, and now he's still trying to teach. And the, the other people in the department say, Professor, you better uh, stay out. But he said, No, I can, I can, I can. And uh, it, it's fun, you know. Uh, so sometimes we have to find. I have uh, that case right uh, now. Uh, you have it's a, a very like difficult case. I'm living that right now and there's there's nothing you can do the professor says yes i can teach and again if i have to prove that they can't teach it's a you know it'll take years uh so that's a problem um 
Dean uh, Graciela Noja, you have any other comments you would like to share with us? Not for the moment, particularly, but I was planning on uh, uh, asking you about the separation, maybe in terms of research and teaching activities, if you, within your universities and faculties, have separate contracts, for example, because we are quite struggling with this issue, having lots of lectures, lots of courses that we have to teach, but also numerous research activities that we also have to comply with. So I was wondering if maybe you do have separate positions in terms of research and then uh, dedicate it separately for teaching at the same time. Thank you. Who wants to answer that? I'll go for us at Willoughby. Um, we don't. So our faculty have responsibilities in teaching, service, and research. And recently we've had increasing class sizes. <laughs> um, heavier teaching loads and, and we've been hearing about the challenges that poses for maintaining their research portfolio so we face that challenge as well as you described actually we do have different uh, positions right so we have uh you know the tenure track and tenure faculty line and then we have instructor positions so uh for an instructor an instructor has to teach five courses right? Uh, tenure, tenure track faculty, they only have to teach three because it's understood that one would count towards research and one would count towards service. Yep. So the, the general logic is that, you know, a person can teach five courses, but if you're tenure, tenure track, you only teach three, you know, you're given uh, one course release, so to speak, for your research and another uh, course release wow. for your service. Um, so, so there is a difference for us. And if we do want to ask an instructor to do service, for example, serve on a committee, we'll reduce their teaching load by a course. That way they'll teach four in a semester. And if a tenure, tenure track faculty want to teach more than the three, we'll pay them the overload to teach more than the three. That's the way it works here. Uh, if I may... Uh, in in the previous session, we had the idea, and I announced it. And since you are the leaders here, deans of uh, faculties, I will propose the following: we can set up a kind of a workshop once a month, certain day, for example, every first Wednesday of the month. Uh, where we can meet through uh, Microsoft Teams and discuss thematic topics. So we invite people from all different universities. Next month, we have this discussion. We assign two people to make a, a short presentation on this thematic topic. And then we participate in a discussion with the final conclusion at the end. So what I have in mind is that as we go, we may have many people coming to this group. And from scratch, we may go to a think tank. Okay. And have certain topics to discuss with experts from, from, from academia and promote universities, our research, and keep us busy, let's say. <laughs> so I think, uh, Graciela, uh, partially, it's, uh, may, may, we may satisfy her need to do research uh, abroad, not Perfect. total, but partially, at least partially, at the beginning. Uh, because if we keep going and uh, we uh, we pay attention on what we do and what we uh, uh, offer to other people and to, to, to academia, we may have something real, real interesting. What do you think? I'm in. Persa, 
I'm in too. <laughs> Personally, I really do agree and thank you for the initiative. It would be very, very well welcomed, uh, particularly in terms of research because we also have the financing of uh, some sort of con connected with the research output and not necessarily all kinds of research output, but particularly articles that are uh, very well indexed and by Web of Science in particular. So it, it definitely is always a, a challenge and a struggle for our colleagues and any discussions that relate to that would be more than welcome. So thank you. Dean Spiridakos, you have a question, I think. No, no question. I have an announcement uh, concerning the uh, what Professor Thalassinos uh, said before, previously. Uh, actually, in Greece, uh, the last month, uh, we have uh, uh, the meeting of uh, the deans of the business schools. It is, uh, it is uh, uh, a meeting that uh, uh, took place for the first uh, time last month. And uh, we'll continue to have uh, uh, meetings uh, and we'll try to leg legislate it to make it uh, uh, a normal, a, a formal uh, meeting in order to discuss uh, things like, uh, like, this, like this that uh, Professor Thalassino said. And uh, I, I, uh, the idea of Professor Thalassino is excellent and uh, I think that uh, it, it is on the good on the good direction i think uh, the interconnection between us is a wonderful idea and uh, this conference is an example of the interconnection of us and of course it applies to not just deans but to faculty members and staff and uh, there is a lot of um, benefits to be gotten by um, working together for example the United States, a lot of schools have a lot of data. Uh, other schools which may not have as much money abroad may not have as much data. Well, there can be a nice uh, collaboration between two professors or three or four where, you know, uh, the professor from the United States, for example, is responsible for the data, more for the data than anything else. So this is obviously John Nash got a Nobel Prize for bringing up this point of collaboration and uh, it is a wonderful concept that we are experiencing right now in front of us and with this conference. I'm, I'm glad uh, to hear it. Yes, uh, Thodoros, you, you want to say something? Uh, anybody from the audience? I'm very glad to hear it. Okay. Yes, I, I uh, think that it is a great idea. It, um, it, we will meet uh, with each other each month. It's, 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 it's fantastic. First of all, the research. Professor, Professor yes, Professor Medeiros, yes. Right, I think, I, I also think it's, it's, a, it's a good idea. It's a brilliant idea. If I may uh, bring to your attention that uh, certain uh, bodies, accreditation bodies like the double uh, ACSB, they do have the dean's uh, gatherings and they do have the annual dean's conferences. Uh, there is a wealth of information if, if anybody goes to those conferences. Uh, if we would like to emulate something like that, uh, the deans or uh, gatherings, probably we might learn quite a lot from uh, such uh, accreditation bodies. Uh, with regards to the topics, the way that they develop the topics, the way that they, they carry on uh, they, they, their work. Just a suggestion. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Dean Semidaras. May I have the last question? Promoters. We have the deans as promoters of this uh, initiative, and we invite all the people, all faculty members from all different universities. Uh, from my side, I can invite uh, colleagues from 20 different universities from uh, all over the world. So I think we can, we can have, you know, this group of people uh, had, having taken the idea seriously. We have the technology now, we know, we have the know-how how to do it. So we can meet uh, just for fun, let's say, at the beginning. And then as we go, we may create something very interesting. Dimitris, what do you say? The microphone. The mic, sorry. 
your microphone. I always, I always enjoy uh, listening to you. So I really appreciate your views, and I think you are right. I think you are right, professor. So ask ask your contacts on uh, from uh, Lithuania and. Uh, uh, Latvia and Slovenia, we need this part of the world, you know, we, we, we need to, to, to open, to make it as broad as possible. Yes, it's true. Yes, sorry, I, I think it would be a very good idea also to benefit from the European Universities Initiative. We have started uh, uh, this year uh, uh, this type of project that is uh, financed very well and it goes uh, hand in hand with several universities across Europe. So it would be a good idea maybe even to start uh, this type of initiative or other projects that uh, definitely rely on strong partnerships among various universities and entities. So it could be a very good uh, starting point uh, this type of, of connection that we've initiated here with the help of Professor Tarasinos and thank you very much for this. So I, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, working yeah, on just, this. I'm sorry. I, I just uh, I uh, I uh, just mentioned. You remember the the keynote speech of Professor Prastakos yesterday? We you yes. I'm not being, but you have to think over again the management curriculum in the digital era. Okay, it's a big project, and sooner or later you should you have to adjust it. Otherwise, you will be back at the end of the, the line. So think about, it. we have we have many thematic topics to discuss on this on these meetings. And it costs nothing actually. Okay, instead of watching TV six o'clock in the afternoon, you just open your uh, computer and get in touch with other colleagues. Lefteri, are you saying we are better actors than the ones on TV? Of course. Of course. <laughs> More decent. Of course. Yes. Yes. More some, decent. Some dead hours, yes. <laughs> not the prime, not the prime time. Not the prime time. Okay. Is there a, la a last question uh, of our uh, presenters? And we want to thank them very much for their wonderful presentations and very me, informative me, presentations. John, I, I, see, I see a guy from Chicago here. Uh, Ali, Professor Akarka, you follow us? What is your What is your opinion on this? What do you mean? You know, I'm more in economics. You guys are doing more management. I can't hear you. I, I can't hear you. Your mic is shut off. Lafteri, you are not. You sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we just we just mentioned something a, a new initiative to create a kind of a workshop uh, yeah. with participants from all over. Yeah, I heard about that. You know, it's a good idea. If if it is a topic that I can contribute, I would definitely would like to participate. But depends on the topic, you know. Yes, it depends on the topic. Yes, we announce a thematic topic and then we invite people to participate. Sure. Yeah. Uh, with Professor Akarka, we were at the University of Illinois at Chicago some years ago, many years ago, and <laughs> he was one of my professors. Well, Thank, you. Like Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, it is uh, a little over our time. Uh, we want to thank uh, uh, from the bottom of our hearts all of you who have been our presenters today. Uh, we have many good ideas and hopefully we shall connect in the future as pr um, proposed by Professor Thalassinos. Uh, we wish you well uh, and uh, we hope to continue our collaboration in the future. With that, we shall finish this meeting because another meeting supposedly has started already. Yes, so You're please welcome. join the next meeting. It's a keynote uh, speakers. Okay, so we have four uh, people there waiting. So let's uh, get out from here and get in the sec the, the, the next. Uh